Coming up, we'll chat with Fiddler on the Roof cast member Adam Cantor. But now, the youngest Tony Award winner for Best Featured Actress, Daisy Egan, joins me in studio to discuss the upcoming anniversary of her award-winning role in The Secret Garden. I'm joined now by Tony Award winner Daisy Egan. Daisy, thank you so much for joining me. It is my absolute pleasure. Oh, fantastic. So I want to start with let's Tony Award topic. We're coming up on the 25th anniversary of The Secret Garden next year. Yep. Can you believe it? No. Nope. <laughs> but first, I don't want to forget to mention that commemorating the 25th anniversary, there are going to be all these special concerts, and you're hosting one that's yes. going to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's got Rebecca Luker and uh, Max von Essen and Bill Nolte, who was originally in Secret Garden as well, and um, oh, it's an incredible cast. All right, I want to go back now to yeah. how we get to the Secret Garden. Yeah. Now, you grew up in Park Slope, but you weren't a big, you know, theater fan, a, a yeah. theater girl, girl. Well, we didn't have a lot of money. We were on the uh, south end of Park Slope, which was not the very affluent end. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, my my mother was a writer, and my father was an artist. Um, so, as you can imagine, we were pretty much scraping by. So, theater, it just sort of wasn't on on the radar. It was too expensive. But my dad had been an actor in the '60s, and he had quit because he was smart. <laughs> so uh, w the summer that I was um, seven, I must have been, I saw him do a play. He just sort of on a whim, he did a play at Coney Island where he was working. And I went to see it and he played the lead role and I was really um, blown away mm -hmm. by the concept of like, there's my dad, but he's not my dad, okay. you know. And because I was so horribly teased at school, I was like, oh wait, I, there's a way for me to be a different person, mm -hmm. great, sign me up. It, it happened very quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I auditioned for a musical that was happening at BAM and I got the lead role in that and then the next thing was Les Miserables mm -hmm. and then Secret Garden. And to think that at a young age you had a, you were in a very big world of responsibility and in an adult world and one that most people would consider as wonderful as it is, and I can I say that from an outsider, but so risky and so difficult. It was such a safe place for you. I, I just had this giant network of, of support. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my family, and then I had this theater family that was, you know, massive. Amazing. And, yeah, it, it was great. It included Rebecca Luker and Mandy Patinkin, yep. and oh my God, what do you get? Uh, memories of working with those fantastic oh, people. Oh boy. Well, I'll tell you. Mandy just makes me smile, like yeah. ear to ear, or whatever. One of the funniest uh, memories I have of Mandy is, for some reason we were both in LA at the same time, and this was before the show started. I can't remember if we had already done the reading, but we were both in LA. I'm sure he was just in LA because he's a movie star. Um, and he took me to Disneyland to like bond with me. And so we're, we're walking around Disneyland, you know, and I, I only knew him from uh, The Princess Bride. Right. And, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at Disneyland with Inigo Montoya. <laughs> and he's a very, um, I, w I don't know that he's method, but he's a, v he, you know, he like really gets into his character. Sure. Sure. And so we see this uh, old woman who was a legitimate hunchback and she was all hunched over. <laughs> And we followed her through the park for like an hour because <laughs> he wanted to like, you know, see how she moved. And I was just, <laughs> I was, how do you process that? I'm 10 years old. I'm with Disney Inigo like Montoya at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and we're chase, we're like following around a hunchback. Oh my God. Take me back even a little bit further. Okay. The Tony nominations mm -hmm. come. What do you remember about that? I mean, what must be a crazy time? Yeah. I guess I must have been going to school. It was before school, and I think I think literally I think my agent called or something, and uh, my you know my mom said Daisy you have a phone call. I think he had already given her the news, and she's like, all right, <laughs> uh, Daisy you have a phone call, <laughs> and you know, and he tells me, and it was just I remember screaming and running running through the house, oh my God. and um, and then my mom was very. Um, she she kept telling me, you know, they don't give Tony Awards to kids. You've been nominated, and that's wonderful, and that's probably where it's going to stop. Mm -hmm. And you know, and be grateful for that. But they don't give these awards to kids. Um, but just in case, let's write some names down on a piece of paper. Thank God, because I would have 
been blank. Yeah. I would have been completely blank if I. We can see, we see that. <laughs> yeah, it was just. You did a. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do do you have any recollection of hearing your name called at the award? Of Audrey Hepburn giving it to you? I had my stuffed rabbit with me. I was wearing a, an AIDS ribbon, mm. and Jeremy Irons uh, had been was wearing an AIDS ribbon, and apparently I was the first female to ever wear an AIDS ribbon oh on television. Oh my God. And then I found out, and for me, it was just another thing. It was right. like, oh, yeah, of course I'll, like, why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was all this political stuff behind it. Mm -hmm. um, not that I wouldn't have worn it, but apparently um, I found out recently that CBS said that if anybody mentioned anything about the ribbon or AIDS or anything, they would cut the feed. Oh, my God. I mean, it was such a, di I mean, can you imagine? It was, a it was such a different time. But to be a part of that as well is just like... What an unreal. I mean. And I and I also do remember this. I, I walk off stage after I got the award, and and the stage manager came up to me and took it away. And I didn't, you know, they take it so that they can like send you a real one with your name engraved on it. But I just thought they were like revoking it. And just I was like, wait again, a minute. Like, <laughs> I know. I was like, wait a minute. I d what did I do between there and there? Like, how did I lose this? They were like, no, no, no. We're gonna send you uh, one with your name on it. And then. Um, and then they said, you have to go across the street to the press junket thing. And nobody had prepared me. So I said, I don't have to do that. I'm just a kid. Because I literally thought they were going to like go make me cross the street by myself. I was like, what if I get lost? I didn't realize that somebody was going to like <laughs> escort me. You. Oh my God, yeah. they should have told you. L looking at you know the industry today mm -hmm. and a the landscape of child actors. Mm -hmm. When you look at all of these kids and these little professionals, what do you think, what advice do you want to? It's funny, I was I mean, telling- Last year we had Sydney mm -hmm. Lucas nominated for Best Supporting Actor mm -hmm. Tony. I was saying to my dad, I wish I could have 10 minutes alone with Sydney Lucas. And my dad was like, you should have 10 minutes alone with her parents. And that's really the thing. It's, it's the parents, because they're the ones holding the reins, obviously. But maybe if she were a little older, I would just, I mean, for somebody like Sydney, she, obviously she's phenomenally talented. Mm -hmm. um, she's incredibly talented. But that is one piece mm -hmm. of a very, very complicated puzzle mm -hmm. that adds up to success. How did the industry and how did acting, you know, change for you after you lost your mom? Oh, well, huh, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, I was 13, so I was just becoming a, a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, I I started high school the fall after she died. I, you know, became a woman in the medical sense. Mm -hmm. um, this is when you hear of child stardom going. Yeah, exactly. And you know, in retrospect, like it, probably the smarter idea would have been for me to have taken a break mm -hmm. from performing. But you know, it was really sort of all I knew, and um, I think. I think subconsciously I felt um, a pressure to keep going because, mm -hmm. you know, people expected me to. Mm -hmm. How did writing and creating your own shows and your own work, you know, evolve that thinking and... Well, it's funny, I, I actually did quit show business in 2007. I was living out in Los Angeles and I just, I just sort of reached my, you know, my limit. And so I quit and I was out for about four years. And I had friends who would, you know, host cabarets and stuff. No, oh, come sing for us. And I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And what then- What were you doing instead? Uh, I was working at a university. Oh, um, cool. I was an administrator at a university. It was so weird. I had like an office with my name mm -hmm. on the door and people came and they asked me things and I like knew the answer and I made spreadsheets. <laughs> That um, was a fun role. Yeah. <laughs> and very occasionally someone would go, your name is familiar. And I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh -uh. <laughs> I don't know. Administrator. Mm, I don't know. But it's so interesting because you got into the into theater mm -hmm. in order to escape from being yeah. yourself and be someone else. And now cabaret and the performing yeah. is so personal yeah. and, and having to just be you. Well, I think after, you know, 36 years, I finally, <laughs> or maybe at that point, 30, I, you know, I got to a place where I was like, I don't need to escape myself. And also, I, I, have, a, I have a unique story, mm -hmm. and, 
and I have a story that's interesting on a lot of different levels, mm -hmm. um, and nobody else, you know, no one else can say that they're the youngest female to win a Tony. So it's so I do have these stories that people are interested in hearing, and I think I have a perspective that is. Um, unique. Well, Daisy, filling people with joy is what you do, so thank we'll you. settle with that for thank now, you. okay? <laughs> Daisy Egan, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.